Next presenting company is Sintela with CEO Evi Lundgren, Auckland. Welcome, Evi. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here to present an update from Sintela and also from our subsidiary Targinta. So first of all, our forward-looking statements. So Xintela is a biopharma clinical stage company. We focus on stem cell therapy and also cancer therapy through Targinta. We are today a team of about 25 people and we're based at, here at Medicom Village. Founded in 2009 and already started about 10 years ago. Xintela is listed on NASDAQ First North since 2016. And since uh, last summer, institutional investor Fleer Invest is our major shareholder. Sintela develops a superior stem cell product platform named XStem. And we have two projects in clinical development in osteoarthritis and in difficult to heal leg ulcers. And our development of XStem is really based on a proprietary stem cell marker, Intuguin Alpha 10 Beta 1. XTEM is patent protected for all therapeutic uses and we have built our own GMP manufacturing facility and we have a license since about two years to, to manufacture uh, XTEM and other ATMPs. So XTEM consists of allogeneic, so donated mesenchymal stem cells from adipose tissue. A key step in our development in XTEM is this integrin. So we really solve a very known problem that MSC preparations from different sources contain a lot of other cells as well. In the picture here, you can see this colorful plate here demonstrating heterogeneous MSC preparations with blue cells, the MSCs, but also with other cells. So this is a common problem, has been and still is. So we solve this by using this integrin marker and antibodies to, uh, to select the MSCs from the heterogeneous MSC preparation to get a homogeneous XTEM. And we have demonstrated that XTEM has several functional and regulatory advantages, like improved differentiation to other cells, increased secretion of important factors, and also improved homing to the damaged cartilage and to the damaged tissue. And importantly, consistent high quality between donors. That is also a great advantage with XTEM. Our pipeline is in the product. So XTEM can be used to treat many different uh, diseases. And we focus on diseases with huge unmet medical need. Osteoarthritis, difficult to heal, venous leg ulcers are in clinical development. We've also performed preclinical development of, of uh, treating acute respiratory distress syndrome, and that will also take a step into clinical development when the time is right for that. So, osteoarthritis, and uh, there is no effective treatment today. And the lifetime risk of developing knee OA is very high, it's 46%. And globally, around 23% of all adults over 40 is estimated to have OA. Today, we have no treatments. We treat pain, inflammation, so the symptoms, and many end up with joint replacement. But one positive thing here is that our preclinical studies support disease-modifying effect of XTEM in osteoarthritis. So we believe this has a great potential to be a D-mode. So XTEM is now in clinical studies. It's the first in human phase 1 to 2A study in patients with uh, knee OA. And this is a, a KL grade 2 to 3. So we treat with a single intraarticular injection of XTEM. This is a dose escalation study with three dose levels, eight patients in each dose. And then we have the option to also expand up to 54 patients. We do safety and a preliminary efficacy assessment every six months up to 18 months. The status now is the first dose level is completed and judged safe, and the second dose level is also completed and the safety evaluation is ongoing. And to the picture here to the right, you see the first dose level here and the second, and we're now getting ready to dose also the third, third group. And you can also see here that the first cohort now is getting ready for the first six month assessment, where we will look at different pain assessment, uh, 
different walking tests, MRI, X-ray, and so on. The other clinical study we're performing is in difficult to heal venous leg ulcers. And VLU is the most common leg ulcer. And difficult to heal is when the, the VLUs do not heal within six weeks. And many patients, 4% of individuals over 65, and there is no effective treatment available. Today, mainly debridement, so the, the wound is cleaned, different compression, dressing, and uh, different drugs also for, for symptoms. We have also something we believe can be positive for these patients, that XTEM now has demonstrated excellent wound healing capacity in preclinical models. So it will be very exciting also now to see XTEM in patients with um, VLU. We have started a phase one to a study, uh, and uh, this is a randomized placebo controlled single blind study with 12 patients. Here, there will be a single dose administered topically, and this will be added on to standard wound care. Safety and preliminary efficacy in this study will be assessed already after 10 weeks, and then a additional follow-up after six months. We are uh, currently in screening and recruitment of patients. During this screening process, we have found, found out that this is a very difficult patient group to recruit. Many patients have difficult to heal venous leg ulcers, but it's an, uh, the patients are elderly, and they also suffer from many other diseases and complications that many of them are excluded due to the, uh, the tough excluding uh, criteria. So remember, this is now also, first of all, a safety study. We have um, made some amendments in, uh, the, in the protocol, and uh, that has been accepted by MPA, and we have also even further intensified the screening of patients. So uh, we hope this now will help and that we soon can start uh, dosing the first uh, patient. We have some very exciting milestones coming up in 23 with clinical results from the OA study, safety results from all dose levels and also early efficacy signals, clinical results also from the difficult to heal VLA study with both safety and efficacy. We also expect to have manufacturing collaboration established and also to advance the development of EQSTEM for treatment of horses. We are planning commercial deals after safety and preliminary efficacy readouts after the, this clinical studies phase 1 to A. So for the difficult to heal VLU uh, study, this um, is expected in, in 23. And uh, remember now, safety and efficacy already after 10 weeks. And in, in osteoarthritis during 24, and here we also have safety and efficacy readouts every six months. We also uh, plan to partner XTEM for clinical development and therapy of other indications, including ARDS. So then I will switch over to our subsidiary Targinta, developing first-in-class tumor targeting antibodies. We did a very interesting discovery a few years in Inxintela that our stem cell marker integrin alpha-10 is also expressed on aggressive cancer cells. And we realized that we have a very unique cancer target. We have an outstanding patent portfolio, uh, really protecting antibody treatment targeting uh, integrin alpha-10 and the antibody drugs. We have developed first-in-class cancer antibodies and, uh, and also an ADC. And uh, in, in this very, we can say, yeah, in a very exciting uh, and growing therapeutic area. We are now in the process of preparing for phase zero clinical studies with the goal to validate the target and the treatment concept. Our lead indications are triple negative breast cancer and glioblastoma. These two cancer forms are very aggressive cancers with uh, very little therapy available and um, the five-year survival for these patients uh, is very low. 
We have a pipeline of first-in-class antibodies targeting integrin alpha-10 beta-1. Target 9 is an antibody drug conjugate, an ADC, that has a toxin conjugated to the antibody. And then we have Target 9 that is a function-blocking antibody. And Target 9, our ADC, is humanized IgG1 with a cleavable linker, and attached to it is a very potent new generation payload. We have demonstrated efficient internalization of the antibody, selective killing of cancer cells expressing integrin alpha 10 beta 1, and also reduced tumor growth in cancer models. And cell line development has now been initiated. This slide shows some uh, significant efficacy data in in vivo. This is in a glioblastoma model, where we can show that one dose of the of targ9 really suppress the uh, the growth of the glioblastoma tumor, which is different than compared to the control antibody and and the PBS. So really strong effect of one dose of target 9 and we could also demonstrate that body weight is not significantly affected so this seems to be safe target 10 are function blocking antibody then also an igg1 antibody and in vitro we have shown that uh, uh, target 10 really suppress proliferation migration of um, aggressive cancer cells and really also reducing tumor growth of glioblastoma and triple negative breast cancer in, in animal models. And the picture here to the right show suppression of tumor growth, the tumor volume here we measured in, uh, with treatment with TAR10 and then in comparison with a control antibody. And we also have demonstrated inhibition of metastasis in triple negative breast cancer uh, models and uh, cell line is also has also been initiated with this uh, uh, with this antibody and this picture here shows some data from a metastasis model where we uh, here measure the total metastasis burden after 11 weeks where we could show that titan really suppress the metastasis and in comparison then with the control antibody. And in the picture here to the, in the middle picture, we also can see by imaging strong reduction in lung and liver metastasis and no effect on, on body weight. So we are now preparing for phase zero clinical studies, which will be a very important value inflection point uh, for, for Taginta. We, um, uh, this will be a preclinical development, including cell line development, GLP production and toxicology. And then to do phase zero clinical studies, which is also called microdosing in cancer patients with glioblastoma triple negative breast cancer. And in these clinical studies, we're using a very low dose, to isotope labeled low dose of the antibodies. And the goal is really and to validate our unique target and treatment concept in cancer patients, and really to be able to see that the antibodies target the tumor, tumors in the patients. We also aim for early partnership to accelerate the development of our therapeutic antibodies to patients. And in my last slide, I'd like to show some information in this field that Taginta is in with the, the ADCs. ADC is one of the hottest areas within oncology. This is due to great advancements have been made with new payloads, more potent payloads and, and better chemistry. And also improved, so improved clinical outcomes have been seen and a great surge in market approvals. And uh, today we have 12 different ADCs approved. And with them also comes commercial success and several have last year also shown blockbuster status. Interestingly for us is of course that high deal activity is also seen at earlier stage. Look there at the slide to the left. We can see several deals already in discovery, but also in the preclinical phase. An average deal value in preclinical stage uh, during the last five years is 2.1 billion US dollars and upfront 52 million US. With the new target, and first-in-class antibodies with uh, strong preclinical data and also a strong patent portfolio, I believe the future for Taginta 
and uh, the antibody candidate is quite bright. Thank you very much. I guess financing is your main focus right now. What can you say about that? Yes, definitely. It is no surprise that uh, we need additional capital to further develop um, our stem cell program and cancer program. So we evaluate different financing solution for both Xintela and Targinta, either together or, or separately. Our situation is quite different now since our last financing round last summer. Now we have a very strong life science anchor investor board in Fleri Invest with um, strong interest in both Xintela and Targinta, both in the short run and in, in the long run. So I'm really confident that we will find uh, good financing solutions for both companies. And what are your plans in the veterinary medicine project this year? Well, we have quite recently, we can say, reactivated the EQ STEM program. An important part of that is that we have a new project leader on board and she will, together with, with uh, a team at uh, Xintela, now plan for further development of EQ STEM to be an important treatment for horses. And where do you see Xintela in two years? In two years' time, I can see that we have partners on board for further clinical development and commercialization of uh, XDEM for both venous leg ulcers and, uh, and osteoarthritis. And that we also have uh, partners for developing XDEM for uh, additional indications. For Targinta, uh, two years from now, uh, we should that about the time when uh, the phase zero study should be completed. And uh, with positive data from the phase zero studies, I can see that we have very exciting discussions ongoing with partners for further development of, of uh, our uh, antibody candidates to patients. We look forward to hear more about that. And thank you, Evie, for joining us today. Thank you very much.